Okay, thank you very much. So we can go much. on with uh, Professor Piotr Jablonski, diaphragm flap, last stand for MPIM patient. Dear colleagues and friends, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for organizing the committee for inviting me to, to give this talk. Last year in Ljubljana, I talked about uh, treatment of patients with uh, uh, thoracic complications after deep thoracic surgery. But today, I try to, to, to focus on the, uh, some uh, prophylactic measures uh, in a, a specific situation of surgery. According to the rule, I uh, have to announce that I have not any conflict of interest. And uh, I want to start my presentation from uh, the presentation of this horror of thoracic surgery. This is bronchopleural fistula with uh, empyema at right, after right side pneumonectomy. And uh, this is the most uh, difficult uh, complication in, in thoracic surgery uh, as far as I understand. Uh, how often do these complications occur? Uh, we have found <clears throat> some publication and the incidence of uh, bronchial fistula uh, it's, uh, till one to 12 percent occur in, in the population. Uh, we found a few papers about TB surgery which showed that 0.6 till 16 percent of bronchial pleural fistula after lung resection and pneumonectomies uh, we could check this complication. What the reason? There are some reasons, and uh, obviously bronchial stump insufficiency is often present on the right side and rarely on the left side due to anatomical reasons. Uh, we found a few experimental trials devoted to the method of prophylaxis of bronchial stump problem. In one of them, as you can see here, authors compare different technique of bronchial stump closure. At the end, they could uh, not define the best method. Uh, we found also some trials which showed that incidence of uh, bronchial fistula occur more often in patients with active endobronchial TB. From the other side, bronchial stump reinforcement with muscle flap decreased the incidence of the life-threatening situation. Uh, the same results were shown after multivariate analysis. Uh, according to Pomeran's publication 20 uh, years ago, bronchial stump reinforcement with muscle flap is recommended for cases with preoperative sputum positivity, um, polymicrobial space contamination, and presence of uh, preoperative bronchial fistula patient. Uh, historically, mass and a mental flap are well described method coverage of the bronchial stump. Uh, here, you, uh, here are some variants of muscle flap. You can use latissimus, ratus anterior, and other muscle presented on this figure. For a long time, momentum was used as the best material for bronchial stump reinforcement in oncological surgery after lung transplantation. Nevertheless, we could not find uh, any recommendation for amandoplasty in patients with TB and other infection diseases. Uh, which flap are used more often? Uh, as you can see on the next slide, in 60% surgeons have never used any reinforcement measure for bronchial stump protection during the last 15 years. Other muscles were used in the equal proportion, 13, 14% only. But uh, now uh, I want to show this, uh, this particular patient and uh, it is a really big problem. What mask could be used in this malnutrition patient? Uh, there are some differences between these two types of patient, and uh, as a rule, we have no make a really difficult choice for chronically ill patient, for example, TB patients. So that is why I speak today about diaphragm flap as a last stand before empyema in patient with uh, required right pneumonectomy due to the destroyed lung. Uh, 
Now I will show you the results of our retrospective cohort trials and the outcomes of right pneumonectomy for a pulmonary TB patient. Uh, the aim of this study was to make a uh, comparison uh, of the efficacy and safety of diaphragmoplasty for the main bronchus reinforcement after pneumonectomy for mycobacterial uh, pulmonary diseases. Uh, uh, we performed 131 pneumonectomies during the last four years, and 21 patients uh, was, uh, uh, according to decision of multidisciplinary team, put it in this group for reinforcement. Uh, 14, uh, 14 males, 7 female, middle age 40 years, all patients had malnutrition, uh, all patients were treated with anti TB drug more than two years, at least two years and more. All patients had totally destroyed light around uh, lung. Primary uh, pneumonectomy was in 57% and uh, completion pneumonectomy in 43% of cases. All patients were divided into groups. In 30 patients, group one of the first group, diaphragmatic web was used. In the second group, six patients were operated with latissimus dorsi and two serratus anterior. Uh, let me show some technical tricks of formation of mask flap of diaphragm. At first, diaphragmotomy should be done. After that, we can observe, uh, on the left side, you can see the schemes of uh, the, uh, this operation. And uh, uh, the direction to, to make this transplant a little bit longer, uh, in, it depends from the case. Uh, after uh, diaphragmotomy, we can observe subdiaphragmatic space and estimate at the positivity, uh, possibility of diaphragmoplasty. Next, move in the transaction of diaphragm step by step uh, along to virtual line, which you can see on the skin. It is very important to visualize and save the vessels for normal, uh, for normal nutrition of this flap. It is very important to visualize and save the vessels. I just told about that. And this is our, our flap. And in, in one minute, it will be ready for putting in the mediastinum. Uh, a flap should be positioned on the mediastinum and should be fixed on the trachea, right main bronchus, bifurcation, left main bronchus, and peribronchial tissue to cover the bronchial stem. Last step in the suture of the diaphragm wound. Just I want to, this is preparing of the, of the flap. Sometimes the wound of diaphragm uh, looks like too big, but uh, without any problem in all cases, we could uh, suit it after after preparing on the, this flap. And uh, this is very important things to, 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 to put this flap around the bronchial stump. You have to, to fix this flap not only for the suturing line, but over the flap to, to, to put it inside of this flap. This is a very important thing in this manner. Uh, sometimes uh, surgeons are facing the problem with diaphragm approach. On this slide, I want to show you the better access to the diaphragm by additional thoracotomy with skin incision. Uh, but, uh, and sometimes we can perform the same approach without additional skin incision. Uh, in Russia, this method is named after overhaul. I prefer uh, this technique uh, almost in all, all cases. The results are shown on this slide. Statistical significance was only in duration of surgery. Diaphragmoplasty associated with longer uh, operative time. There was no differences in blood loss, post-operative morbidity. There was no lethality in both groups. Overall operation time was shorter than in group two. Uh, insufficiency of the bronchial stump was found in 31% and 37% in second group, respectively. Uh, uh, difference uh, where in the formation of bronchopleural fistula, this uh, condition occur less frequently in the diaphragmatic flap group. Uh, this is the point, uh, insufficiency with fistula and without fistula, and it was statistically 
uh, very important. So, if summarize the results of our uh, investigation, diaphragmoplasty in comparison with other tepos related with high operation time, space, uh, same incidence of bronchial stump insufficiency, same morbidity, same blood loss. Nevertheless, the majority cases of bronchial stump insufficiency uh, were ended without fistula. Now I want to present you two clinical cases. One of them, it was a female with bilateral cavity disease and subtotal destructive lung. Uh, after intensive preparatory conservative treatment during six months, right hemolytomy was done. Uh, early postoperative period was uneventful, but uh, later we have found bronchos, uh, 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 we have found uh, fistula, but diaphragmatic flap saved this situation. The patient was discharged uh, on the 72-day uh, surgery without bronchopleural fistula. And uh, the second case is very similar, but the patient was non-tuberculosis mycobacterial destruction lung uh, was and uh, the process was unilateral. The right uh, lung was completely destroyed. Right pneumonectomy with diaphragmoplasty was performed. And uh, this is endobronchial picture uh, of the seventh postoperative day. Uh, one month later, the bronchial stump insufficiency uh, was uh, revealed. Uh, patient was discharged on day 89 after surgery without bronchopleural fistula. And one month later, uh, you can see in the bronchial suture. Uh, in conclusion, let me summarize the diaphragmatic flap for bronchial stump protection after right pneumotomy is an effective and safe procedure. Diaphragmatic uh, flap could provide lower incidence of bronchial fistula in cases of bronchial stamp insufficiency in comparison to other flaps. Uh, additional trials are necessary to better understand in this situation. And I uh, want to thank you and I want to announce that uh, uh, next conference, uh, World Cardiovascular and Thoracic so uh, Society will held in St. Petersburg. You are welcome in St. Petersburg in September 2020. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Jablonski, for your beautiful presentation. We have time for one uh, question from the audience. Uh, Gunnar Leschba from Berlin. Here, I'm in the back. Okay. Side. Yes, yes. Um, I have a question. Do you denervate the, uh, the the muscle flap? Because I can imagine if your your patient is breathing, then and there's still the nerve uh, supply to this diaphragmatic flap. Wouldn't it contract, or am am I thinking it wrongly? We never uh, have seen su such a situation. This flap never contracts. Uh, okay. What about muscle? It, it depends from the technique of preparing this muscle flap. It, uh, it, uh, each flap could be longer than you need. Uh, this is the best guarantee for, for making good, uh, good uh, and vascularized flap for covering uh, the bronchial stump. This yeah, but my understanding was you're you're t taking very good care not to harm the the vessels, but aren't the the nerves going along the vessels? I couldn't catch your the, the nerve. No, no, the no. Nerve. no, no, they it's never separately. It's okay, we never touch the nerve. Okay, without any pharyngotripsy, without any surgery on the on the on the nerve, only flap with vessels. That's all. May I ask one more question? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, Peter, you know uh, Christian Palero from Bucharest, and he uses the two-stage technique for pneumonectomy in uh, drug-resistant bacilli tuberculosis. The first step is to, he manages the bronchus, just bronchus, through the neck. and he does the rest after two weeks. What do, you, do, you, do you know this technique and what do you think about it? Yes, I know this technique. Uh, I prefer to do that very rarely from the left side. Uh, as a rule, sometimes we perform transternal uh, bronchial uh, occlusion at the first step, but only in patients with uh, empyema, with uh, drainage and pleural cavity. 
when we have bronchopleural communication between the lung and pleural cavity. And in three, uh, four weeks, we perform a second step. Uh, just three patients in my clinic is waiting for such kind of procedure. One of them I was operated ne next week. So it is used, but uh, what, sometimes we could use this technique from uh, neck, but only from the left side. I haven't any experience from the right side. Thank you. Thank you. Last question. Okay, Alessandro from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Professor, uh, do you see any difference uh, around the uh, uh, complementary pneumectomy and pneumectomy in one uh, step uh, um, about the bronchial insufficiency? Do you think the, the, this is the reason from some, some problems on the bronchial when you have to reoperate the patient? In the beginning, we used Pomeranz criteria, but now we are discussing this problem with our multidisciplinary team. It's quite empirical decision. You are right, thank you for this question, but I, I hope we could collect something maybe when we have a little more um, cohorts, we, we know the answer on this question. But only one point, uh, other 110 patient was only two fistulas. So the incidence less than 2% only. So that is why I guess that our decision was right in this particular group. Uh, but uh, I, I couldn't explain all tricks of this decision-making uh, situation. Thank you very okay. much.